from the Sugar Bowl, the site of our annual sunrise service, and even as it may not be technically sunrise, indeed, we are experiencing the sunshine and the light, and may it remind us of the love that comes from a now empty tomb. And so we wish and we hope and we pray that each and every one of you are able to celebrate and rejoice in this day, especially as we receive the promise of everlasting and eternal life. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Loving God, we gather in the early morning of your resurrection. We have been mourning and weeping, believing that you have been taken from us. Instead, you meet us in the garden of new life. Here, in this sacred place, we discover that you are alive, that sin and death cannot defeat you. Now our tears of sorrow turn to tears of joy as we experience your presence among us. Today, we begin to understand that joy comes from grief. Let us receive your peace. Amen. Hear the story of the Easter Sunday. The Gospel reading from John 20th, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? 
For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will come and take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May God bless this reading. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we gather today in unprecedented times, and may that help us better understand what the first disciples experienced between yesterday, Friday, Today, Saturday, and tomorrow, Sunday. So as we gather in this time, let us be the ones who share the good news, the good news of new and everlasting life, the good news of the empty tomb, and the good news that through Jesus Christ, we are God's forgiven and chosen and freed people. And so during the course of this day and this weekend, reach out, reach out to someone with whom you cannot share space, but with whom you share the Spirit, and may we together bind ourselves as one, celebrating and sharing in the great love that God has for all of us across the miles and across the ages. And so let us be God's people, receiving the gift of this day, new life and everlasting life. Amen. extinguished. This morning it burns brightly, reminding us of the light and the life that we have now received. Late in the day on Friday, the crucified body of Jesus was laid in a tomb, and then a large stone was rolled into place so that it would seal the entrance. For Jesus, the tomb became his shelter in place. But then we hear the Gospel of John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw 
that the stone had been removed from the tomb. The stone that sealed the tomb, that held the crucified Christ, had rolled away. Jesus was free. Jesus stepped out of that tomb with new life. He was not the same. He was so different that Mary did not even recognize him. During his shelter in place, Jesus, the man, became Christ, our Savior. My friends, this year we are relegated to sharing the resurrection celebration from within our tombs. The stone that seals us in our places of shelter, it remains. Just as death trapped Jesus, so this virus traps us. My friends, on this morning, we however rejoice. We rejoice because Christ conquers death. The stone is rolled away and he emerges victorious. And so may our presence with one another, even though from a distance, be our statement of faith no stone can separate us from the promise of new and everlasting life. So on this day, and from this our sacred place, I offer two promises. First, I promise you that the stone that seals us in our places of shelter, it will be rolled away. We will conquer caution and anxiety and fear and the illness that has trapped us. We will gather in this space again. We will mix and mingle without masks. With our hugs, we will erase the six-foot gap. Social distancing is going to give way to joyous gatherings and celebrations. My friends, like Jesus on Easter morning, we will be set free. And here's my other promise. We will be changed. Like Jesus, we will be different when we emerge from our tombs. Perhaps so much so that some won't even recognize us. It cannot be otherwise. One cannot go through such a trying time of fear, pain, and even death and come out the same. The question is not whether we will be changed. That cannot be changed. The question is, how will we be different? The question is, what will we do with our new life? On that promised day, when that stone is rolled away, may God bless us to be more compassionate and understanding of one another. May we be more grateful for the blessings that we may have taken for granted. May our passion for the common good trump our need for personal triumph. May we come to realize and rejoice in the things in life that matter most. And by the grace of God, may we be a more loving people. Alleluia, Hanover Saints, the stone is rolled away. Alleluia, Jesus has conquered death and is free. Alleluia, in Jesus' freedom, we receive new and everlasting life. Alleluia, Hanover Saints. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. Amen.
hymns as we prepare to join our hearts in prayer, I invite you to join in when I say, God, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need, saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With humility, we pray for this planet, our home. Heal what we have scarred and broken. Renew the face of earth from north to south, from east to west, so that your creation may speak to us of your goodness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With hope and love, we pray for the nations of the world, especially those places overwhelmed by disease, war, and conflict. By the light of the resurrection, bless healers and peacemakers who work to bring wholeness and justice to their country, city, village, and household. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With compassion, wipe away the tears of all who weep. Give us the spiritual tools we need to feed those who are hungry, clothe those who are naked, and comfort those who are grieving. Send your angels to watch over those who are vulnerable and sick. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Passing from darkness to light, from fast to feast, from bondage to freedom, from death to life, we commend to you, gracious and ever-living God, all with whom we pray. Hear us now as we pray our risen Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so now, sisters and brothers in Christ, we come to the table, the table that has been set for us. Jesus made a promise over the bread and the cup just a few nights ago, and this morning we celebrate the fulfillment of that promise. And so as our history and our tradition and our scripture tell us that on the night that he was arrested and betrayed, Jesus gathered with his disciples for their final meal. And a part of the preparation was the bread, and so Jesus took that bread and he gave thanks to God for that bread and then he broke it. And as he broke it, he gave it to them and said, take and eat. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. This is the body of Christ, the now risen body of Christ. In the same way, later in the meal, Jesus took the pitcher which had been prepared for them. And after giving thanks for it, he poured it out, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood.
Every time that you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. You proclaim the resurrection. Friends, the cup of salvation for you.